have faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. And as we gather today and we bring our lives before the Lord on this feast of Pentecost, as we celebrate that gift of the Spirit, the Spirit that guides and leads us in our lives of faith. And as a community of faith, as we gather together, I ask you to remember in your prayers, uh, Lourdes Bruta, who passed away on Friday, very early in the morning. So please keep Peter and the family in your prayers. And her funeral is actually going to be next week, Saturday. It will be at St. Bernadette from, uh, because they want to have a luncheon in the cafeteria following. So uh, please keep this in your prayers. So let us prepare our hearts. Lord Jesus, you are the bread that has come down from heaven. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the light of the world. Christ of mercy. And Lord Jesus, your resurrection and new life. Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to our lasting life. Amen. Let us sing out our praises as we are sprinkled with this church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Hey, 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of the one spirit. The word of the Lord. rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. On this Feast of Pentecost, there is a prayer that Pope Francis reminds us that we should be praying every day. It's very simple, and it says, Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. 
Make my heart open to the beauty of God every day. So as we gather today and we enter into this celebration of Pentecost, you know, it is the time to invite the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, to fill our hearts, to open our hearts to the very word of God, to open up our hearts to goodness, and to open up our hearts to see the beauty of God every day. If we do those things, we will continue to take in the very life and presence and spirit of the Lord. Acts reminds us today of how all of this began. And it began because the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. And as the Holy Spirit came into their lives, their fears were turned into courage, and they went forth and became passionate about proclaiming the Lord Jesus. But the biblical reader is one who is reminded of Moses on Sinai. You know, remember the thunder and the smoke, all that dramatized God's appearance on the mountain. But at Sinai, the people were accepting God as their God. They became the people of God. Well, this is a moment of a new Sinai. It's not filled with all kinds of smoke and thunder. But we hear about it's a moment when God's presence came like a strong driving wind and tongues of fire. So as the disciples receive uh, this spirit, this presence into their very lives, God has renewed that covenant with each and every one of us. Because through this Pentecost event, we hear that the word is proclaimed to people of all backgrounds, of all nationalities. We begin to hear about the Parthians, the Medes, the Elamites, representing peoples from all parts of the world. And it was an invitation to all and to recognize that they were called to be God's, to be the people of God. What a wonderful message for us on Pentecost. What a wonderful message for us to take into our lives and our hearts as we are called as God's people. And then in the Acts of the Apostles, which we have been reading throughout this entire Easter season, Luke tells us 57 times about the wondrous acts of God and how God was working in the lives of the disciples, in the lives of the people, in the lives of the community, and how their lives were transformed by that spirit that they received into their lives. In many ways, it's reminiscent of the breath of God. That breath that is breathed in the book of Genesis into the lives of Adam and Eve, giving them the divine life. Richard Rohr speaks about um, the breath of God. And he said one of the most important things that he learned in his life, in his priesthood, his ministry, was something that was taught to him by a Jewish rabbi. And as we know, the Jewish name for God, which is Yahweh, he said it was not spoken, but rather it was something to be breathed. And he meant, as he talked about that, because really the pronunciation, when you think about it, is the attempt to imitate the inhalation 
and the exhalation of our breath. So if we take in, it's that notion of ya, and then way on the way out. But when you think about it, when you take in a breath, it's like, And in the Jewish tradition, it was to recognize that breath of God. And every breath we take is the pronunciation of the name of Yahweh into our very lives and into our very beings. And so in recognition of that, is to see that presence of God and to know from that very beginning breath that we take in as a child when we speak to the very last breath that you and I will take and we exhale is a reminder that we are the Lord's. We belong to God. We are God's people. And Pentecost reminds us of the breath of God. How many times we've been celebrating that Jesus breathed on them. And even from the cross in John's gospel, he bowed his head, breathed his lattice, handed over his spirit to his disciples. So maybe, just maybe, as we take that into our hearts and into our lives, we too can feel that every day, every breath, as we seek, as Pope Francis invites us to see the word of God in our lives, to see God's presence, to see the beauty of God, and to see goodness pouring out into our lives and hearts, that our lives too will be transformed by the very spirit of God in our midst that you and I participate in the very breath of God. In the second part of my homily today, I want to just take a few moments to acknowledge that on this Feast of Pentecost, that here also in the city of Milwaukee is the celebration of Pride Fest. And I say that today because as we gather, we as a Catholic community need to also support the LGBTQ community in this month. It's a way for the community as well to be proud, to celebrate their own identity, that they too are beloved children of God, filled with that life breath of God, that their family and friends love them as they are. And they have the right, as the catechism says, to be treated with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. So how do we join in? By loving and being welcoming communities of faith. Father Jim Martin, uh, just wrote the other day, and he said, you know, it's especially important for churches to mark Pride Month, since much of the rejection that the LGBTQ people have faced has been motivated by Christianity. At least that's what many people think Christianity teaches. And he says, as an example, one of the most common reasons for homelessness among LGBTQ teens 
is that they have been kicked out of their families for ostensibly religious reasons. He said churches have also been places where LGBTQ people have felt insulted, rejected, and unwelcome. A result of the words and deeds of not only some bishops and pastors, but Catholic lay leaders and the faithful. So he says it's important for churches to mark Pride Month and remind our LGBTQ friends that they are welcome in what is, after all, their church as well. So as we take in those words and we think about that, I want to share with you an experience that happened uh, this past month. And it was an experience of having dinner with a transgender individual. And as we went to dinner and I was listening to her story and the experiences that happened in her life, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's 22 years old. So we're talking about a young person uh, who has just transitioned in the last couple of years. But what struck me was the story that she had sent to me in her email. Now, I wish I could tell you the whole story, but trust me, we'd be here about another 25 minutes. So the short part of the story is this. She said, and these are her words, but part of me still feels hollow. And that is the part of me that is rooted in my Catholic faith. I feel like I never really found resolution with the church. This has gotten worse in time. It feels like the church is joining in with large parts of the rest of the world in telling me and others like me that we aren't wanted, that we aren't equal to the whole normal people. And in some cases, treating us in a way that makes us feel less than human. She went on to say, sadly, my experience has been far from positive. The priest of the parish in my hometown told my parents that if I showed up at Manx presenting as anything other than a man, then he would deny me communion. And I am deathly afraid of that. That someone at whatever Catholic church I go to will eventually realize I am transgender. And then I will be ousted from there as well and no longer have a home in the faith I have been a part of all my life. And she said this, I hope that one day the church can come to see people like me as equals, as people worthy of respect and being treated with the basic human dignity that God calls us to treat everyone instead of seeing us as evil people. We aren't evil. We are doing what we must in order to be better disciples of Christ and spread his message. And then she said to me, but remember that you touched a young lady's heart by standing up for her and I'm sure you will touch the hearts of many more young Catholics who are in the same place that I am. It means more than you could imagine to finally have someone to speak up for us. A group of people who have been treated 
like outsiders for so long, whose voices have been ignored, and who often feel that the one place they thought they could call home has abandoned them during their biggest time of need. I share those words today because as a church, we profess that all are welcome, that all are made in the image of God, and that all share in the life breath of God. And why do I talk about Pride Fest today? Because there's many people who have not found them in the community of faith and feel that they have been rejected not only by the community of faith, but that they have been rejected by God. As we take in the life breath of God today, as we take in the image and story of this young transgender woman who grew up in the Catholic faith and still feels rejected and in her hometown parish to return there will be rejected by the community of faith. And so we say, why do we celebrate pride? Why does the LGBTQ community celebrate pride? It's because there are people out there who do not feel loved and accepted for who they are. So let us, in the spirit of Pentecost, in the spirit of all being welcome to the table, reach out to those in any way this month that we know. Let them know how much they really are loved by God, by you, by their community, and hopefully one day they feel in the Catholic Church. Let us rise and let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Savior of heaven and earth, of all things physical and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God, light of life, true God and true God. Be God is not made, not substantial to the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and his burial and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has sent him into heaven and has seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, God is living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism with forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we now turn to you and we offer you our prayers. For the whole church on this day of Pentecost, 
as the glorified Christ lets fall his promised Holy Spirit, that the strong wind of his coming may surge through the upper room where we have waited to kindle in each of us the holy fire. We pray to the Lord. For the lay faithful, that the Spirit's gift of fortitude may make them strong friends of Christ, able to stand up for justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. That our communion with Jesus in this holy sacrifice may intensify the presence of his spirit in our hearts and in our lives. We pray to the Lord. For all experiencing stirrings in their lives, call to change and growth, repentance, sickness, anxiety, and sorrow. We pray to the Lord. For all the parishioners on our prayer lists, including Bob Kirst, who has begun his hospice journey, we pray to the Lord. And for all the parishioners of St. Bernadette and Our Lady of Good Hope, and all our faithful departed ones, especially Lord Isfruta, who passed away Friday morning, that the Lord will send forth his spirit into their souls, so that they may be placed in eternal life along with the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. But Heavenly Father, hear our prayers, prayers that we have spoken, the prayers that remain in all of our hearts, which we make through Christ to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing and preparation Kim. All are welcome, number 753, 753. <laughs> It is truly right and just, 
our duty and our salvation. Always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your pastoral mystery to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those that you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, open to all people the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with passive joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Jerome, our Archbishop, with Jeffrey and James, Richard and Reverend, with all the bishops, clergy, religious, and deacons, and all of your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Bernadette, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. So by the help of your mercy, that we may be always free from sin, saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever, ever. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of Christ Jesus.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all the last thing. Please join us in singing number 462, Spirit Growing Through Creation, our communion with him, number 462.
the announcement, mass of Christian burial will be for a long time. May the good old parishioner and grade school teacher, Lourdes Ruta, will be at St. Bernadette next Saturday, June 11th. Visitation will be from 9 to 11 a.m. with mass following. Hi there. First off, I want to thank Father Greg. He shows us the light, all of us, whether you're sitting here or over there or out in the streets or at wherever he is. He shows you how to be the light. So thank you. So for those of you that don't know, Awesome. That's not funny, Mark. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am your parish secretary. I answer your phones and calls. I try to help you as best I can. I also help out at St. Bernadette's. I am the festival chairperson, and I'm really excited. We are bringing it back. So after the pandemic, we can finally celebrate something. So today we celebrated the Holy Spirit. I know I'm not the only one sitting in here that relies on that Holy Spirit. Um, in the past couple of months, I've been shouting at my desk, Holy Spirit, help me! Uh, and just, please, just say yes. Whether I'm pulling on a vendor, a fan, or the supply chain, just say yes, please help us out. We're trying to bring it back. As I said, it's been the most difficult festival I've ever done because the pandemic has changed all of our lives. We can't do it the same way. We won't have rides this year. There's going to be some things that are in different places. It's just going to be different. But yes, we are having a festival. So just say yes. And I know that with that Holy Spirit on our side, we all can make a difference. And I know some of you are sitting in this church going, well, that's not my church and I'm not going there. I can't support that. <laughs> you know what? We are one community. We all work together whether it's the people on our street, the people on the other side of the street, the people in the grocery store, the people in the bar, wherever you meet people, we are one community. And that's the number one goal of the festival is to bring our community together. Okay, well, the finance committee would say, we're here to make money. Kind of all about that. The strategic planning committee would say it's called evangelization, Margaret. So call it whatever you want. I call it fun. I call it bringing people together, being nice, and being kind. I'm just here to remind you it's two weeks, two weeks, 14 days. 14 days, we're going to be jamming out with loud music. It's going to be great, great bands, service project, um, a whammy award winner, the Squeeze X. So if you like accordions, I'm telling you, Saturday afternoon, you want to be there. Saturday night, any butts. Sunday morning, we got picking up speed. It's fun bluegrass music. And Sunday, and this is a big secret. I don't know if you know, but Mark Barossi, who's our director of liturgy, he's got a band. And they're playing. So come see another side of Mark. All three days, we've got a rubbish sale, flower sale. Hopefully, please, hopefully, just say yes. 
Uh, Saturday, we have a cribbage tournament. Anybody know how to play? 15-2, 15-4. All right, we'll see you signed up. Um, an auction on Saturday. This is one of my mom's favorite things. So come try to outfit her. We've got great auction items. Thank you, Mr. Lipscomb, for just agreeing today for market tickets and dinner with them. Um, a lot of other fun items. There'll be a wine tasting um, in that auction um, hosted by, that's right, me. Um, Sunday, probably the best day if you're going to pick just one day to come. The tent mass. Uh, the music starts at 10. The mass is at 10 30. Uh, hopefully, the weather will work with us. But we got a rib dinner that is out of this world. We have the raffle drawings, the baskets, and cash raffles. I know that's another Greg's favorite part because his name's not in any of them. Um, and the best part on Sunday, I think, is the cake walk. We have a little paddle wrap. You can win cakes, all kinds of desserts. Gets us set up for the month. So you're sitting there going, hey, Margaret, what can I do? I want to say yes. You can volunteer. There's a sign up genius app. I don't know if any of you are good with computers. <laughs> uh, there are slips in the back of church on that table. You can fill out. You say, hey, Margaret, I don't know how to work a computer, but I want to come. I want to help. If you think, oh, I'm too old. I can't do that. Don't say that to me because there is something for everybody. Just ask me. Right, Mom? <laughs> uh, and worst case scenario, if you forget to take a slip and you don't know how to work the computer, you all know how to dial the phone. Just call me. I'll walk you through it. Uh, what else can you do? You can donate. You can donate to the rummage. They're asking that all the rummage items be turned in by next Sunday. Uh, you can donate auction items. Like if you got bird tickets or pack tickets or you just want to have a dinner party, or you can just donate cash. We'll have a link out on the website if you just want to make a cash donation. So please just say yes. Listen to that Holy Spirit. Help bring this community, our community, together. I think we can all make a difference. So let me hear you. Just say yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Flyers in the back. If you want to take them to your neighbors. Let us rise. Let us break. O oh God, bestow heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace that you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all of its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. Let us go forth to love and to serve our God and one another. A closing hymn, Sing Out of Earth and Skies, number 499. Number 499.